everybody. How's it going? Time for a Q and A. As you might have noticed, face reveal time. Result. Um. Thank you all for sending your questions in. I'm uh, really pleased to see some of you uh, took the effort to come some ideas, send some in. Uh, our first question is from Mr. Benny Boy Biker. It says, uh, "Congratulations on the subs, mate. Thanks a lot, bud. Um, my question is." If you be any vlogger, and can be, I don't think it means, um, for a day, who would you be and what would you get up to? I think if I could be any vlogger for a day, I would choose either Mr. Baron Von Grumble or Jake Gardensnake, purely because. Mr. Baron, he gets to play with all the nice expensive toys and get, get to play around on fucking BMW Thau or something. But Jake's got a great big open wasteland in his garden that you can play around in, and that's pretty much just as good as it gets really for me, especially considering that I ride supermotors. Uh, next question. Mr. Southern Th Fried Tom. So what, Southern Fried, I assume it's Southern Fried Tom. Um, in your opinion, who's the sexiest vlogger in the UK? In brackets, male only. Um, I don't know. I haven't really seen many UK vloggers in the flesh. Um, does yourself count? I think I'd have to say myself. I mean, these man boobs, just sexual. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with myself. Next one, Mr. UK Demon Motor Vlogs. How's it going, dude? You right? Um, congrats, mate. My question is, what made you get a scooter in the first place, and then decide to put it into a hobby? slash project every few years. Well, it started off as a uh, couple years back, six years back now, more than a couple, um, I was going to do my car test and after failing my car test twice, I decided I'd, I'd had enough and I went in and I did my CBT and I managed to talk my parents into getting me a bike. At the time, I was looking at a Yamaha R125 sports bike, but my dad wouldn't have it, we were saying oh, it was too dangerous. And I ended up getting this little uh, Yamaha scooter, and I hated the things, it was horrible. And after about three months, uh, I got rid of it, and I bought myself a Gilera Runner scooter, brand new. And when I had that, I got into trawling the forums and that and trying to learn a bit more about them and like what how to tune them, what to, what goes wrong and just general stuff. And through getting into the forums and that I kinda I got I got into the, the the meat scene of it and I sort of started going to a few meets and a few bike rallies and that and scooter like camping events and all sorts and over a period of time through going to rallies and meeting people and so on and so forth it turned from like transport into more of a hobby and the more and more it's unfortunately the more and more it turned into a hobby the less and less it become transport to the point where eventually I ended up getting a second bike just so I could fucking actually treat the scooter how I, how I wanted to treat it. So yeah, there's your answer. Uh, next question, Mr. Phil480. 
congrats on your first hundred. Cheers, bud. Um, who? The question is, who inspired you to start vlogging, and which vlogger would you like to meet the most? Um, who inspired me? Again, back when I when I got into vlogging. I only really watched uh, Baron and Spicy at the time. Uh, I would say Baron was the one that got me interested in vlogging and started got me into watching vlogging videos. I, it, it all started when I um, I was on YouTube one day and I stumbled across Baron's Green Laning video. <laughs> Where he took the fucking jigsaw down the green line, dropped it in the puddle, that, <laughs> and I thought that was entertaining. And that kind of got me hooked. Um, I watched all his videos. His Euro trip, I thought, was brilliant. And um, a few months further down the line, I was then looking to buy my supermoto, and I stumbled. Oh, at the time, I was gonna get a pulse, and I stumbled across Spicy's review of the Sinus. And I watched that, and I kind of liked his sense of humour. And from there, I, I started watching his videos, and it was probably it was probably spicy that got me into actually doing vlogs because I was watching his videos around the sort of time where I bought myself a camera because I bought a camera purely. Originally, purely just to have one all the time when I was on the bike, and um, like it was spi Spice's videos that kind of showed me probably that it could be more than just a camera, if you know what I mean. Uh, next one, Mr. Paulie V. If you could ride any motor vlogger's bike for a day, ignoring license, etc. Who would it be? Jake's WR 450. Out of doubt. <laughs> because, um, uh, as you know, I, I ride WR 125. And a WR 450 is what I plan to get next when I pass my test this year. So, that really, at this point in time, is more or less my dream bike. So... If I could choose one, it would be Jake's WR450. I'd love to spend a day ripping that round and then casually hand it in back with no tyres left. <laughs> so, yeah. Next one. Mr. Skint Biker. If you could ask any motor vlogger any question, what would it be? See what I did there? In brackets. Bad pun, bad pun. <laughs> um, if I could ask any motor vlogger any question, it would probably have to be, I would ask one of the big boys, um, M13, Jake, uh, Baron, uh, probably M13, uh, I'd ask him, when they first started doing it, if in their wildest dreams if they ever imagined it becoming what it is now because I'm, you wouldn't think it would you like they've got I mean, some of them have got well over a hundred thousand subscribers they're all tuning in to um, basically watch you ride your motorbike to work and back it's, it's mad really isn't it it's not it's, it's not the type of thing you ex you expect it's just the everyday average person so yeah I'd probably ask, ask them if in their wildest dreams if they ever imagined it becoming what it is now so yeah the next question quite a long one Mr James Jones Jones sorry if I pronounced that wrong um, first riding experience and how you felt after your first crash and how you felt after if it's not too personal because I have just recovered from one and I am 
I just am wondering how others might have felt after they have crashed slash come off. Also, dream bike. Sorry if you have mentioned this in previous comments. Um, my first riding experience was probably when I crashed my right scooter. <laughs> oh, it was few years ago now, um, I might come out of my house, it was way before I had CBT, it was about seven years ago now, and he just had a new scooter, and I said to him, give a go then, and so of course he handed me the keys, but the sod that he is neglected to tell me that the throttle stuck open, so I got on it, started it up, and promptly crashed the thing straight into the fence at the end of the garden, <laughs> going arse over tits in the process. That was probably my first experience. My first proper experience probably wasn't until uh, I actually passed my CBT and then I just I spent weeks out and about on the bike by myself just cruising about. How, how I felt after my first crash well my, my, my first crash uh, was a biggie actually. I actually had a very large incident. A car pulled out of a junction on me and I went over the wing. Uh, I fractured two ribs. I fractured a bone in my hand and I bruised two kidneys and this was while well in full, full bike gear. So this is the reason why I'm such an advocate about wearing bike gear. So yeah, and uh, basically, I got picked up on fucking spine board and taken to hospital, normal procedure. And the whole time, all I, all I could worry about was my bike at that point. And I was lying in the hospital, waiting for me ultrasound to make sure I hadn't got no internal damage. And um, my mate called me up, and he said to me, "What? Well, what do you plan to do? And I said to him, no, straight up, honest, uh, I plan to go home and get started on rebuilding it. So uh, I, uh, they all thought I was mad and I got out of the hospital and the very next day I went down to the breaker's yard and I bought my bike back. It cost me about £200 just to get it out of the impound yard. And I took it home and while having me one arm all bandaged up in a sling like that and all my ribs all wrapped up, I made a start of stripping this bike down and rebuilding it from the frame up with one hand all fucking pumped up on drugs and um, within the space of about a week and a half I had the bike rebuilt roadworthy again and I was out riding again while I still had a broken hand but uh, what the true effects of the crash never really hit me until I was back on the back out and about on the road uh, I got out and about and I, I noticed I was very nervous and I was very cautious and I was I was looking really far up the road and stuff that was happening and forever and a day I, I kept expect, expecting stuff to dive out of junctions at me and I kept getting images of things happening going wrong and every time a car pulled up to a junction I would grab for the brakes and all sorts of Thankfully, about two and a half years on now, uh, I think I'm finally over it, so it's all good. But I have still, now ever since, I, I do suffer from road rage these days, which is not too good. Obviously that is the last remnants of the damage you left, but don't worry about it, mate. Any problems it causes, you will get over it after t over time, it's just... Things take time, unfortunately. Uh, have we got any more? I don't think we have. Anyway, thanks, guys. It's been great having your questions and answering them. I, I wish we'd had more so I could make the video a bit longer, but so is life. No, never mind. No, there might, there'll be more 200 hopefully, and uh, everybody, 
thank you for watching thank you for subscribing i really do appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos i'll um see you all at 200